Cartoons are an immensely powerful tool that have been utilized in politics pretty much forever, and it's kind of obvious to see why. The political game is kinda all about boiling down complicated issues to their simplest form and presenting that content in short, bite-sized segments so that the greatest number of people may be persuaded on an issue with the least amount of effort. And nothing does that quite like a good political cartoon. The ability to take a complex subject and reduce it to a simple illustration is a very powerful tool and requires a great degree of talent. A talent that the subject of our video today, George Alexopoulos, has plenty of. His art is genuinely really compelling. His pastel color palettes are aesthetically pleasing, his characters are emotive and wonderfully expressive, and he utilizes a consistent four-panel format so his work always feels familiar. In a lot of ways, George's work is sincerely charming and displays a true mastery of cartooning. If only the ideas and the messages within them weren't so repulsive and awful. Before we get to that though, let's take a quick look at the man himself. Honestly, I don't know anything about this guy really, what his career has been like or whatever. Uh, the total extent of research I did on him was just to browse through his Twitter for a while. Uh, and yeah, it's exactly what you would expect coming from a hardcore conservative dude. Uh, on Twitter. The majority of his tweets are just complaints about mask mandates. What else would you expect? Be me, sexy, grocery shopping, no vax, no mask, no problem, cloth masks everywhere. They actually think it makes a difference. I don't judge, cause that's how I roll. Cafe in New York. Could I get a cashier? Sorry, can you put your mask Visit on? Visit game Place store. No face. mask, like no this? service on she window. Does quiet. Cashier does on my area. Mask, mask or 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 still yes, I don't. It's not my job. I don't know. I don't know. I don't Touch grass. Oh my god, it feels so good. Like, they should add this in a Minecraft update. His bio reads, award-winning cartoonist who serves no master. And I think that's just great. Now that we're thoroughly acquainted with our subject, let's take a quick look at some of his cartoons. I think this comic is a great place to start off with. In the first panel, we have a typical red-blooded American father playing catch with his son. You know, son, Americans had free speech when I was your age. He looks up tearfully, reminiscing about the past. Unfortunately, we remained silent when speaking up mattered the most. However, things take a turn for the worst. I'm not your son anymore, bigot. I'm your daughter now. The son, I mean, the daughter says. Then a gang of police appear out of nowhere and throw the father in the handcuffs and take him away from misgendering his own kid. Oh no. Guys, this is what it is like to live in 2022. This is so sad. Like and subscribe if you agree and hit the notification bell. I really like this comic because of how unaware it is of its own absurdity. Uh, yeah guys, did you know that the existence of trans people is a direct attack on free speech? Because it's definitely against the law to refuse to refer to someone as their preferred pronouns, especially a four-year-old's. And the state will totally send the police to gaffle you up if you do so, just like in 1984. Given a deeper analysis, there's something bizarre going on in the construction of this comic. George is not really saying that the police will literally arrest you for misgendering someone. That's simply an analogy, an exaggerated depiction for how people will criticize you and respond to you if you do. It's too insane to be literal. Yet despite that, the first half of the comic explicitly states that we have lost our freedom of speech somehow. But if the cops aren't actually going to arrest us for misgendering people, then how exactly have we lost our freedom of speech? It's like George is simultaneously demanding that we take his comic seriously, but also that we shouldn't take it seriously at all, and that it's just a joke. This is a funny phenomenon that we will encounter more of, so stay tuned. Okay, next comic. It starts off with two students alone in the library, discussing why they've been put in detention. Hey, I recognize you from social studies. The way you refused to wear your mask was hardcore. This comic is already giving off immense levels of boomer energy. Oh dear, the girl begins to sweat. It's Vincent, the biggest, baddest delinquent in school. Gulp. Th th thanks what are you in detention for? She barely stammers out. Then Vincent leans in close and reveals his crime that earned him punitive action. Donned on his head above his grinning face rests a mega cap. Dun dun dun! 
I think we should thank George for highlighting this issue that is not discussed enough. The Trump supporter discrimination in schools is rampant and needs to be addressed. This happens, guys, I swear. There's two things being pushed in this comic that I think are fun. The first and obvious narrative is that conservative kids are apparently facing discrimination in schools for identifying as Republican. It should go without saying that this is so beyond dumb that it kind of hurts. I know this for a fact because when I was in high school during the 2016 election cycle, my friends and I paraded around the entire city, fleecing the booths of every presidential candidate at the time. We gathered enough Trump, Hillary, and Bernie merch to equip a small army with, and we wore that stuff to school for like the entire next month. And uh, guess what happened? Nothing. I was never expelled or put in detention or sent home or even talked to. Uh, because why would they? And I'm sure you could Google some instance where this sort of thing actually has happened, uh, but that would not be indicative of a nationwide phenomenon. The second narrative being asserted here is that conservatism is the new punk rock or that being conservative is somehow rebellious. Now this is just my personal, uneducated, lame intake that you can totally dismiss if you don't like it, but I don't think a political movement based entirely around preserving the status quo and policing how people should live can ever be even slightly rebellious. A healthy, strapping young lad is getting vaccinated, doing what little is required of him to protect his community, his loved ones, and himself. But what's this? It's sucking the soul out of him? He's growing weaker. His muscles are shrinking. He's becoming skeletal. He's lost his strength, collapsing into the arms of the nurse behind him. Sometime later, he's at the gym wearing a diaper and a bubble suit, asking a healthy young man that resembles how he used to look. You aren't fully vaxxed? Don't you want to be healthy? Like me? Guys, don't you get it? If you get vaccinated, you become anemic or something. Every morning I break my legs, and every afternoon I break my arms. At night, I lie awake in agony until my heart attacks put me to sleep. Oh, no! Uh, sir, you're supposed to wear a mask indoors. Don't need one. I'm vaccinated. Thanks, though. We're in this together! Wait a minute, in all of these Bruh. comics, George is telling us he thinks getting vaccinated will literally kill you. He's made at least a dozen where people dying of the vaccine is the punchline. But suddenly the Chad guy is vaccinated, and that's a good thing? Why the inconsistency, George? This comic is another one of my personal favorites. It begins with a young boy, heading off for his first day of school as his loving mother waves him goodbye. You can see in his eyes he's at least a little apprehensive about heading off on his own. Spoiler alert, he has a reason to be. You're a bad person. Your mom is a bad person. Your dad is a bad person. The teacher violently lambasts the poor kid. Your grandparents are bad people. Your great grandparents are even worse. Everything they gave to you was stolen. And now you need to apologize for all of it. Amazing. Every word of what you just said. Correct! The comic ends with Timmy drained of life, his desire to learn, and his joy snuffed out. Rest in peace. Uh, so for those of us who need context for this, in this comic, George is depicting what he thinks being white in elementary school is like nowadays. You know, with all that critical race theory going around that kids are totally being indoctrinated with, kids like Timmy here have to endure a lot of mental abuse simply for being white. A very real thing that is happening, guys. Totally not the crazed imaginings of a schizophrenic culture racked with fear over social change. Damn! There was a pretty interesting interaction that happened on on Twitter over this. Someone replied to it saying, this has never happened, pointing out the obvious fact that this comic is projecting a weird fantasy. And in response, George says, yeah, it's almost like it's a cartoon, making fun of the guy for taking his comic seriously. Hey, George is doing that thing again, isn't he? You know where he makes a comic that has an explicit, clear message, but is designed to be so over the top and ridiculous so that any and all criticism of that message can be dismissed on the basis that it's stupid to be taking the comic seriously in the first place? 
Like, George is very clearly saying that white kids are being made to feel bad in schools. He is very clearly saying that conservative kids are facing discrimination in schools as well. He very clearly thinks that free speech is under attack by people with preferred pronouns. And the pandemic isn't real, and vaccines will kill you, and the latest presidential election was rigged, and trans people competing in sports are doing so for an unfair advantage, and FBI agents pose as Republicans to make them appear bad, and a whole lot of other silly things. But no, you can't criticize George for any of that. Because it's all parody. It's just a silly joke, dummy. I don't think there's an iota of truth in any of these comics. Uh, in fact, I think they display the mind of someone who is deeply disconnected from reality. Someone whose brain has been completely hijacked by conspiracy and fear to validate their backwards worldview. But these comics do offer an emotional truth. These comics, while completely false, do reveal what George truly thinks of the world, whether he'd like to admit it or not. And because George is simply pandering to a conservative audience, these comics are an insight into the emotional state of conservatism as a whole. And what do we find? A giant, swelling victim complex. Ooh. Poor conservative parents are the victims of trans people and their pronouns. Poor conservative kids are the victims of discrimination in schools. Poor conservatives are the victims of evil mask mandates suppressing their freedoms and harassment by those enforcing said mandates. Poor conservatives are the victims of the election process. Poor conservatives are the victims of trans people in sports. Poor, 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 poor conservatives. <laughs> and that's the video. Hopefully you liked it. Uh, if you want to see more, like and subscribe. And no, I don't like hate conservatives. Of course not. Uh, in fact, I think it's a bad idea to generalize them all as like whatever I found here. I think George is the case of someone who's just terminally online and probably should log off at some point. Anyway, see ya.